made to work your way. Get off, get off my shoulder. Say the things we used to say. And make a word, make it go away. All right, so let's make the world go away, huh? All right, so what I want to do today is I want to show you uh, sort of a timeline. Um, we're going to start here, and uh, we're going to call this, uh, we're going to call this, uh, this is the point when Jesus was born and when he was crucified, he died, resurrected back to life. And ultimately uh, ascended to heaven with the promise that he would return. All right. And so this line is going to represent his return. Okay. And so this is interesting because if I have a pencil in my hand, this is exactly what my writing looks like. Doesn't look any different when I write stuff down on paper, but here we go. All right, so and then this beyond this point, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But that's that's going to be after the return, if that makes sense. Okay, but first of all, let's get to the to that point. So we already know that Jesus was born of a virgin, and that he was um, uh, among his own people and his. Uh, his own people did not accept him, and they crucified him. They killed him, and he was, for three days, he was dead in the belly of hell, and he resurrected. He def died, defeated death, and resurrected back to life, right? And now he has ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return, and then that's this right here. Now, first of all, I want to warn you of two groups of people. And the first one, obviously, is the futurist, who will tell you everything is going to happen in the future. For example, they'll say the tribulation. That's going to happen in the future. And they'll say the mark of the beast. Well, that's going to happen in the future. And they'll say, well, the Antichrist, well, that's going to happen in the future. Okay, so these people are as, every bit as dangerous as the preterist who say, well, all that stuff has already happened. Every, there's nothing to see here, folks. Everything's already happened. Whereas the futurists are the opposite. Everything's going to happen. All right, and I'm telling you, I'm not a truth is somewhere in the middle kind of guy, but in this case, uh, the truth is not either one of those <laughs> The, the truth is, uh, these things are happening right now, all right? And these are being revealed to us in our time, and uh, not everybody sees it, obviously, right? So let's just clarify here. There is not a seven-year tribulation period. That's nowhere in the Bible, all right? And so the Antichrist is already here, and... Uh, he's been here for a very long time. It's not like something that I know people like to say it's going to happen in the future and you can't prove them wrong because uh, they'll be dead long before people realize, hey, there's no nobody coming, right? There's nobody that was ever born with a 666 tattoo on their head that's going to be the Antichrist. It's going to rise up and be what? The President of the United States? No. No, it's, it's just, I th in a lot of ways, I think it's just a distraction from the reality that we live in, that we have the Antichrist sitting in Rome. He's always been sitting in Rome. He's been there for a very long time. And, of course, um, the one passage, uh, where am I at here? The one passage that uh, that nobody can get around, all these guys are that talk about the Antichrist coming. They can't get around the seven kings, can they? 
go seven kings five. They can't get around this verse, man. You can't explain it. There are, and there are seven kings five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short space. How could this be talking about this omen baby born with a 666 tattoo on his head, and he rises up to be the ruler of the world? That's Hollywood stuff, man. That's not the Bible, okay? People put more stock in the in the Hollywood than they do the Bible. I don't know why. Well, I kind of do know why. Yeah, because they don't love the truth, right? This is a clear indication of a succession of kings, and of course, this is a, in direct reference to the Antichrist. All right. So I'm not making a study about the Antichrist. I just want to point out that. If you're waiting for these things to happen, it's it's never going to happen. Jesus is going to come back, and then you're going to have to stand there and explain to him why he can't come back. Right? You're going to have to explain to Jesus, well, see, the Antichrist hasn't come yet, so you you got to go back up in the clouds. Uh, you're going to be in a bad spot right there. Okay? You're going to put yourself in a bad position to try to explain to the Lord Jesus why he can't come back yet. And then the same thing would apply to the seven-year tribulation. That's nowhere in the Bible. And also with the mark of the beast. And so I want to I want to see that conversation you're having with Jesus when you explain to him he can't come back yet because the mark of the beast hasn't been here yet. All right. I would love to see that conversation. So anyways, this is going to be real simple. That's kind of why I'm rambling on. Uh, so we got... Uh, the, uh, Jesus ascends to heaven, promises to return, and then he returns, and then everything is new. Okay, so this here, this return is, let's do this here. Let's go like this here. This return, there we go, is the great day of the Lord. So let's take a look here real quick. Uh, let me find it here. Day of the Lord. Right there it is. Okay. Match exact phrase. King James Bible. Search the entire Bible. All right. Day of the Lord. Now, is this talked about in the Bible? Let's see if it is. Uh, Isaiah 2. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. All right, so how many mentions do we got? We got 23 mentions of the day of the Lord, and it's all talking about the same day. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day. It shall be the time of the heathen. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. All right, then the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. All right, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? Uh, so, question mark. Okay, so, for the day of the Lord is near upon the, all the heathen, and thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Okay, so obviously we're seeing all these. Uh, for the great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and haste, hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. 
All, right. okay. All these are talking about this return of the great uh, Lord, <laughs> the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So right there again, Acts 2, verse 20. And it shall be turned into darkness. That's a quote from Joel, right? Somewhere. All right. There it is. Joel 2, 31. All right. And then um, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Right there. So his name is revealed here in the New Testament, right? So in the Old Testament, just said day of the Lord. Here in the New Testament, we're getting who the Lord is. It's being revealed for us. All right, so anyways, for you, for yourselves, know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Okay, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So to make this real simple, <clears throat> all right, so this is the end of the world, all right? So as we see here in, like, say, Acts 2 and Joel 2, see, you, you notice how the sun shall be turned to darkness, and it talks about the moon turning to blood or what have you. Uh, Right there in the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So let's go to Matthew 24. You'll notice that his disciples are asking him, uh, what shall, when, shall, uh, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay, and so you notice here right upon his uh, return, it says... Uh, after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. All right, <clears throat> that's parallel with Joel two and Acts tw and Acts two. Um, you know, it's it's all throughout the Bible, just like we saw with the, the this day of the Lord. It's all throughout the Bible. Uh, this is all throughout the Bible. All right, this is the return of our Lord. Jesus Christ when he comes in the clouds of heaven. This is what he's promised. This is what the whole Bible has been preaching uh, from Genesis to Revelation. All right? And again, like say you go to Genesis 3 where it talks about uh, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is coming on the great day of the Lord, at the end of the world, all right, sin, or in this case, what would be the serpent, uh, which represents uh, sin, is going to be stamped out forever, okay? It's going to come to an end forever and ever, and when he returns, he will gather together his elect. So I, so I won't get into that now, but all, all these verses that talk about the gathering together of the elect is talking about gathering together the saved people. All right. And then um, God sends down fire from heaven and destroys all the wickedness of the world. And then, of course, um, upon the complete, and that's the great day of the Lord, right? It's not... Uh, you know, I've seen so many goofy things being taught about this. It's very, very simple. So here in Revelation 21, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea, right? And I, I John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Okay, so, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death okay this is after the return there is no more time for the unsaved to be saved this is the end of the world just as we read in matthew 24 this is the end of the world all right so all things are passed away and jesus makes all things new right it's very simple uh you don't need to complicate it any more than what you're seeing right here.
Okay.